Hmm. On page three. Yeah. I'm a little confused. I can to find the absolute premium. Like, which, how do you know which ones to use? Right. So, uh, extreme value theorem tells us that we look at our um, slope sign line and we pick off any places where the endpoints are and there's any relative extrema. So, if we see a relative max or relative min, then we want to test that place. Okay. So, negative two is not a relative max or min. Negative two is a relative min. Sorry, positive two is a relative min. And then negative four and six are endpoints. So those are the three points that you want to test. Um, I tested negative two, but I didn't have to. Okay, I think that's what we made me look at. Right. right. Class, we didn't go over. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I'll go over. Um, I'll start page five. I'm a little bit early because I've been meeting. That's fine. OK, so table below shows the speed of a sprinter uh, at the time intervals. Um, uh, in the 200 meter race. So part A is uh, estimate the definite integral of V of T using the following methods. Okay, so six trapezoids, three left rectangles. So this is all um, kind of like quiz. Uh, topics, right? So trapezoids, we use um, one half with height one plus height two. So our six trapezoids uh, between zero and 20, we can kind of count off, right? So zero to two is one interval, two to five, five to eight, eight to 11. And we have, we should have six sub intervals there. And then we just go through and uh, go through our uh, trapezoid formula. So uh, one half width, high one plus high two. So my width here is two. So one half times two, high one plus high two. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and we just go down the list and we go through and the keys attached in your packet. And then we go down the list and we find all the areas and then we just add them up. Then here's our, here's our units. Morning, guys. So for the test tomorrow, it will be like one of these problems. Um, it'll be more like page six. Uh, page six and page. Uh, it's, as far as particle motion goes, I think page six and page um, eleven are the best, best representation of particle motion. And then yesterday we did the derivative graph, which um, uh, page three, page three, which is we're asking. And then the Riemann sums, uh, this page is good, but I'm also in class. I'm also going to go through um, pages seven and eight. Uh, yeah, page seven and eight. Those are also good Riemann sums. Okay. But, but we'll we'll go through page seven and we'll go through at least page seven today in fact. Oh, the, these pages are really distinguishable, so I feel like that. Yeah. Okay, uh, guys, we're on page five. We're going to go through the uh, Riemann sums one. Did you do particle motion? Uh, no, we can we can do that uh, second half after this problem. Just okay, so um, <clears throat> we started off talking about trapezoids and how um, we can use that formula. Uh, area is one half width, height one plus height two. Okay. 
Uh, guys, your the keys attached also in your packet, but um, uh, we add up all the areas of the six trapezoids, and uh, so as long as you know how to do it, then uh, we're just going to move on. Now, I do want to point out something. I'll, I'll do this in class as well. Is that whenever you have an integral or derivative on top of an expression, your units will change. Okay, your units will change, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that uh, as well. Here. Uh, we associate derivative with what? With what algebraic slope, right? And slope is uh, division, right? It's uh, we divide uh, units. So if we're finding the derivative of velocity, we get acceleration. And acceleration will be meters per second per second, right? Because we're dividing the units. Now, what uh, operation do we associate integral with? Area. Right, and area, the easiest area formula is rectangle, which is length times width, right? Now, there's also, when we, when we do area, uh, which is what we're doing here, we're also doing that with our units. Right? So velocity and time, they're being multiplied together. Right? What's the unit of velocity? Meters per second, and the time is seconds. So when you multiply these two units, you're gonna get meters. I know it kind of seems obvious right now, but um, when we deal with word problems, the tendency is we're going to get so stuck with what this unit is, we're going to forget that the unit is changing. OK, so just keep that in mind. Derivative and integral, whatever your starting unit is, it's going to change. Either you divide by the unit time or you're multiplying by the unit time. OK, uh, number two here, three left-handed rectangles. So three left-handed rectangles um, from 0 to 20. Now, we're not able to do a calculus um operation here because all we have is a table of values so we just have to rely on geometric shapes okay so we'll, we'll do that together here so three left-handed rectangles from zero to 20. so um we have to kind of do a little bit of uh trial and error here how can we get three left-handed rectangles so this is one this is one this is one so this is one sub interval Second sub interval, third sub interval. Every sub interval is going to uh, share um, where the last interval left off. Okay. okay, so we do width times height, right? That's just area, width times height. Okay. What's the width of my first rectangle? Five, right? Five minus zero is five. <clears throat> okay, which height are we going to choose? Five, right? This is the height. Second rectangle. Six. How do you know which height the to height choose? Height is a seven. Final. Nine. And the height is nine as well. And again, our units is meters because we started with meters per second. We're multiplying by meters. We multiply those together, we get meters. Okay, three right-handed rectangles. Now, all of these problems are between zero and 20, but just be careful on the test, um, the, the integral, the the uh, bounds may change, right? So whenever you build your, your rectangles or your trapezoids, that you're always paying attention to where your bounds are. Don't assume that it's always going to take up the entire table, right? It may be just a portion of the table, and sometimes that is throwing students off. They're like, I can't build three, um, uh, three middle rectangles when, in fact, they're starting at a wrong place. Okay, so um, three right-handed rectangles. This is also um, extending from one end of the table to the other. Right. So it looks like my width is going to stay the same, right? It's going to be the same sub intervals there. So now I'm just picking um, the right endpoint of each sub interval, the right, the height on the right. So first rectangle is going to be a height of seven. Okay. Second sub interval width of six, height of nine. This is a right-handed rectangle. A okay, third rectangle, width of nine, and height of 7.4.
OK, three middle rectangles. Uh, same width here, so width of five, my height. It's going to be that middle Y value. Do not do do not try to do any average range. Okay? Just always pick whatever's in the middle. That's it. Okay, that's all we need to do. OK, second rectangle width of six, height of 8.5. Width of nine, height of eight. Oops. OK, uh, part B, find the average velocity. So average velocity that reminds us of average value theorem. So. Here's the formula. So my average velocity be one over B minus A integral from zero to twenty of V of T dt. So we can carry uh, results that we've already gathered, which is from part A, which is one hundred fifty five point five. So I want to see. Yeah, uh, I want to see your notation to indicate that you are. This is what you're trying to approximate, or that this is what you're. What this way you're trying trying to apply. This is what it's going to look like. Um, it's going to more more look like page seven and eight, which is um, um, it has an interpretation component to it, but I'm going to. I'll, I'll do that at the end of the session. If not, I'll do it in class. OK, but um, I do want to spend a bit more time on particle motion um, in your calculator. Do you You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It says using estimation, so. Thank you. Yeah, good point. All right, um, I'm going to do this again tomorrow morning during the morning help session, but um, I think it's good if we if we do this twice, right? Just so we can um, get really comfortable with the calculator here. So this is a uh, page. Page 11. OK, so we'll have our calculator. We'll do our full particle motion problem here. OK, so uh, an object moves along a horizontal line, has a velocity function. We always, always want to use X, variable X in the calculator, measured in inches per second from 0 to 11. Okay, so we're going to create, uh, well, let's first graph this, and then we can create a sign line for velocity acceleration. Basically, an F prime and a F double prime sign line. How do you do a fraction? Um, you're not going to be able to do it on that one. You have to just use parentheses. So, yeah. Again, um, I think everyone should be in radian mode, but um, just double check. And then y equals x cosine of pi x over 6. Now, what I like to do is uh, I like to always start off with zoom 6. Uh, zoom 6 just helps me. Um, I get my window in in uh, a standard window form, which is negative 10 to 10 on the X axis and negative 10 to 10 on the Y axis. Um, it may not be where we want our graph to be, but it's it's a good place to begin looking. Zoom six. Now I'm looking at this and, and realizing, OK, they're actually setting the 
interval for us. So at least we can set the X window interval. So it's saying from 0 to 11, but I like to see around my edges a bit. So I'm going to go from negative 1 to 12, just so that I so it doesn't feel like a, I feel like I'm missing something at, at the edge of my graph. So um, you're going to adjust your X min, X max. So we'll say negative 11, sorry, negative 1, 12. Now let's say this uh, valley of the graph is being cut off, right? Let's say it went too low and it's getting cut off. So what you can do is if something's getting cut off and you want to see a bit more on the y-axis, just go to your window and then adjust your y min and, and make your wait, make your window go lower. Okay, so you can always if you can always play with those four. If you're comfortable with those four numbers, you can move your graph wherever you want to. Uh, there's another method to do it. I'll show that at the end. Um, it's not a good graph to demonstrate that. Okay, so here's um, what we're trying to do here. And we want, we want to create a velocity sign line, right? This is the velocity graph. And so we want to um, pick out, just like how we did before, uh, from velocity graph, we want to pick out our x-intercepts, right? X-intercepts will be where velocity is zero. And then when we do our acceleration sign line, it's like, our uh, POI um, sign line where we want to pick out the peaks and valleys, right? The hills and valleys are going to be the critical points for my second derivative graph. OK, so uh, let's start off with velocity here. OK, I'm going to find my critical point uh, here. I'm going to use that zero feature to find my x intercept. So do second trace. Select your zero feature. Right, so I'm going to uh, pick a point to the left of my x-intercept. I, I see my first x-intercept here, so hit enter. And then scroll to the other side of your x-intercept, hit enter. And the calculator is going to go and find it for you. It's going to look between the two points that you identified. And those arrows indicate, OK, or the calculator is going to look between these two points, and it's going to try to find that x-intercept for you. Hit enter a third time, guess, question mark. Three. So we have our first critical point being at three. Repeat the process again. Second trace, zero. So this time I left bound. I'm going to um, get close to my second x-intercept. Hit enter. Scroll to the other side of the x-intercept. Hit enter. And hit enter a third time. All right. OK, so now we look at the graph and see, OK, it, am I experiencing positive or, or negative velocity in these up intervals? So from 0 to 3, positive or negative velocity above the x axis, right? So positive. Okay, between 3 and 9, below the x axis. And then from 9 to 11, above the x axis. OK, so next up, here's my acceleration sign line, basically my second derivative sign line. Now I'm going to pick off the peaks and valleys, right? Or the hills and valleys. So um, now this is not going to be the zero feature. If you look at second trace, this is for the x-intercept. The min is for your valley of the graph, your relative minimum. And then maximum will help you find the relative max. And we haven't done this yet, but we won't see it on this test. But if we, if we wanted to figure out where do two graphs intersect, we'll use the intersect feature. Okay, so I'll start with the maximum because uh, I saw the relative max first on the graph. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pick points on either side of your relative where you think your relative max is, and the calculator will go and look for that relative max for you. So you're going to scroll to um, the uh, uh, point that is clearly below your relative max. Doesn't matter where, just relatively close. All right, I'll hit enter there. <coughs> And oops, sorry, I uh, messed up second trace. Second trace. Maximum. OK, so I hit enter left bound. Scroll when this is right bound question mark, scroll to the other side of your. Where your supposed relative max is hit enter again. 
and hit enter a third time, it'll find that relative max for you. The only a value that we care about is, a max, is that um, X value, so 1.643. OK, so now I want to find a relative minimum here. That's also a valley. That's also a um, uh, POI. So now I'm going to do second trace minimum, option three. So now I'm picking a point to the left of my relative minimum, hit enter. Pick a point to the right of my relative minimum, hit enter. Hit enter a third time. 6.542. So acceleration is the slope of velocity, right? Acceleration is the slope of velocity. So here, positive slope would indicate positive acceleration. Negative slope is negative acceleration. And positive slope. Are we okay so far? So this is really the only, this is really the, the big piece that we need the, the, the graph for, right? After this, um, everything we can just use are the features that we've been, we've been using before. Okay, part B, find the times when the object is motionless. Okay, we have everything that we need. Motionless is when velocity is zero, so we have three and nine. Oops. So actually, if we look, um, the graph also hits um, zero at zero. It actually goes through zero, zero. So we have zero, three, and nine uh, as um, places where the object is motionless. Zero is an endpoint, but it also hits the x-axis at x-intercept at zero. OK, next up, find the velocity. So velocity, we're just going to insert two into the velocity function. We'll do the, the um, alpha trace feature. Sorry. Yeah, alpha trace y1. And then if you're using older calculator, you'll do vars y vars function y1. Parentheses for. What's our unit of measure going to be? Uh, yes, inches per second. Yeah, so um, you have the right idea. Um, just make sure you look at your units for each problem. Okay, part D, find the acceleration. So acceleration requires the what of velocity? Derivative, right? So now you have to do math eight and derivative. What's our unit of measure here? Per second, per second. Yeah, inches per second per second or inches per second squared. Part E is the object's speed increasing or decreasing. How do we do increasing or decreasing speed? Are we, are we, are we, compare, yeah, compare velocity acceleration. Same signs would mean increasing speed. Opposite signs would mean decreasing speed. So in this case, we can conclude what? Increase. Increasing speed. Yeah. Um, I'll be more specific than they. So you, yeah, you can say that velocity and, and acceleration have the same signs that t equals four. You can write it that way. 
OK, part F, find the total displacement. So displacements formula is just the definite integral from A to B of V of T. Okay. So displacement is just the integral. Um, we do math nine to get there. So math nine, your math print shows up from zero to 11 of Y sub one. And it's OK to have negative for displacement. All that means is that between zero and 11 seconds, this particle would have moved 11 units to the left. Okay. Made a progress of 11 units to the left of, of, where, you, of where it started. Are we okay with calculator? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. for this one, am I uh, to show you? Is this somewhere? Right, and how you would do it. This says invalid dimension. Yeah, so you see how the plot one is highlighted. You want to scroll up and make sure you hit enter on it. Make sure the plot is unhighlighted. Uh, that's, that's causing okay. an issue. Okay. okay. Uh, everybody okay so far? Now, part uh, G is total distance. So total distance looks a lot like displacement, but just now we need what around velocity? Absolute value. So you're going to select the absolute value feature. I, I'll put, I'll leave that up on the board there. Absolute value is math number ABS. Math num ABS. So if you're using an older calculator, you'll do math nine, and then you'll do math number ABS, put in your function, close the parentheses, comma X, comma zero, comma 11. Okay, you can skip um, part H. Now look at part J, now it's asking for a specific location. It says, OK, we're telling you that um, at zero, this graph, this particle is at position three. Where's the particle going to be at um, come 11 seconds? So we have to use this formula here. This is rearranging a first theorem. Any location that I'm, look for, that I'm looking for, I always have to start with the anchor point that is given to me, and then I'm going to add on the progress that I made from that starting point. So in this case, since I'm looking for X of 11, X of zero is where I'm started and I'm starting and then I want to figure out the progress between zero and 11. I'm sorry, yeah, zero and 11. This is my, this is a uh, example from before. Okay, so I want you to pay attention here. Look at the distinction between these three, right? Displacement is just integral. Total distance is just the integral with absolute value. Uh, final position is initial position plus displacement. So sometimes students get these three mixed up. So just, just make sure that you feel comfortable distinguishing between each of those. Oh, and then on the test, I'm going to ask you to show me your integral notation. Show me this notation. Show me this notation. And show me this notation. Don't, don't just give me the answer. Yeah, and I'll specify that on the test. OK, last up is um, find the average velocity. So average velocity, just like um, the previous problem that we did, is just 1 over B minus A, integral of V of T. So we have the displacement from before, so we just replace that displacement in for the integral. Make sure that you still divide by 11 because got the area and the width component needed to get to the height component. Yes. Uh, you can divide this by, yeah, you can divide this by, you can just show me that. I see. Divide 11 by negative 10. Sure, that's fine. Since we already got that. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to show the work for here, I, but I do want to see the notation for this. 
so that I know that what you're trying, you know, what you're starting with. Yeah. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, okay, let's go to page seven since now I'll, I'm going to do this in, in class as well, but kind of gives you a head start and you guys can if I don't get the page eight in class, you guys can try on page eight on your own. So here's page seven. Okay, particle motion. I'm oh, sorry, uh, Riemann sums here, but this is a very specific word problem um, format here. So again, I want to point out. Um, so again, page seven. Um, important key point. When applying or approximating a calculus process, either derivative or integral, your units of measure will change, right? We just talked about how derivative means that derivative is slope. Slope, you're dividing. When you divide, you're also dividing your units. Integral is area. Area, you're multiplying units with times height. So you're multiplying the units here. Okay, so part A. Hot water is dripping through a coffee maker filling a large cup with coffee. The rate that water in the cup at time t is changing, or the rate the water in the cup is changing, uh, is given by a differentiable function c of t. That just means it's a smooth curve, okay. Um, where t is measured in minutes. Select values of c of t, sorry, of c of t, measured in ounces per minute are given in the table above. So uh, let me talk about what this means here. So at zero minutes, um, no water has been added yet. At one minute, um, we have 5.1 ounces per minute um, um, going through the coffee maker. Right? Uh, at three minutes, it's slowing down a bit, but it's still 4.2 ounces per minute. Six minutes in, it's still decreasing, and then by nine minutes, it's almost like a drip. Right? Nine minutes, is, uh, it's just 1.2 ounces per minute, and then at 10 minutes, 2.3 ounces per minute. Right? So these are all rates. Right? This is tell us how fast uh, water is being added at these specific time values. So part, part A says interpret the meaning of C prime of six and indicate the units of measure. So C of T is ounces per minute. So C prime must be what? Ounces per minute per minute. Okay. So what does that mean? Right, so we know that C of T is ounces per minute. If this is ounces per minute per minute, this is the rate at which um, at which water added to the cup is changing. Right? So it's the idea that if we have a rate of a rate, we want to be able to say it a certain way. We want to be able to say that the rate is changing, or that the rate is being is increasing, or that the rate is decreasing. So you want to use um, two uh, movement words. In a way that it's not just oh, and then some sometimes some students would say acceleration because they associate second derivative with acceleration. That's not going to apply here. So just keep in mind second. This is, I mean, C of T is kind of like first derivative, right? And C prime is a derivative below that. So this is kind of like saying V prime of six, but instead of using words involving particle motion, we want to say C prime of six tells us how fast rate of water added to the cup is changing, and the units is ounces per minute squared. Now part B says approximate the value of C prime of six. So what can we use if we want to approximate C prime of six? Yeah, slope, right? So you can either use these two points or these two points. Change in ounces per minute divided by the change in time. So if we go back and talk about what this means, we can say um, at six minutes, the weight of the rate of water being added to the cup is negative is um, decreasing by a rate of negative 0.7 ounces per minute squared. So basically that's saying that at six minutes, the um, the rate that water is being added is decreasing, right? It's not it's not coming out as fast anymore. That's what that means.
So part C, interpret the meaning of the definite integral from one to 10 of C of T dt. Okay, so this is where I think uh, students struggle a bit. Now C of T is in terms of what unit? Ounce per minute. When you go through this integral process, even if it is just an approximation, uh, whatever we get, we have to talk in terms of what? Ounces, because this is ounces per minute times ounce, times minutes is up to ounces, right? So everything that we do here has to be, we have to talk in terms of ounces. So it says interpret the meaning here. Now, when you do the integral from one to 10 of C of T, we're, we're accumulating all these rates, right? And when we're accumulating all these rates, what's happening is that we're talking about how much water has been added to the cup, right? Because, you know, if we, if we say, oh, 5.1 ounces per minute, and then we continue to multiply all these values out, what's happening is that we're actually getting to um, something that is in terms of ounces. So this represents the amount of coffee that has been added to the cup between the first and the 10th minute. That's what that means. You don't have to do this notation here, but this is just indicating that my C of T lowercase becomes uppercase C of T. This C of T means the water added to the cup in the 10 minutes. This is the water added to the cup uh, up to that first minute. So if I subtract the two of these, what I end up getting is how much water has been added between the first and 10th minute. And the unit is ounces, right? It's not ounces per minute. Even though that's what a lot of students want to say because they see the C of T, they think ounces per minute, and they feel like they got to keep that units for the entirety of the problem. Okay, so that's the hard part, the, the, the interpreting part. I'll go through that again in class, and you guys can practice on page eight to see if, or sorry, yeah, page eight to see uh, if those. Um, uh, that process makes sense. No, you don't have to. Right, not your notation. You can just say this represents. Uh, approximate the value using two middle rectangles. So back to Riemann sums here. So one to ten. So width is five. Width is four. Rectangle first height is 4.2, second rectangle's height is 1.2. So revisiting uh, what we did for part C, we can say, okay, between the first and 10th minutes, we can approximate that 25.8 ounces of water has been added to the coffee cup. Okay. That's what this notation means. And then average value theorem at approximate the average rate of water being added using part D. So we have 25.8 ounces being added to the cup. Divide that over a nine minute period, and we can approximate that on average, 2.867 ounces per minute is added to the cup um, per minute in that nine minute period. So, is, that is there any way I could get this? Yeah, you just give me four seven. We have a second thing. Yes, you've got to use the fifth. Eighteen is directly away. I have to use the two order fifth. Oh. Yeah. So it's just like take it all and then shift back to the four seven period. Exactly. There's no eighteen. Then you choose the one seven or six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, forty two. All right. Cool. I mean, yeah. that's cool. We'll just, you know, yeah, so yeah. Right. Well, I know you're not going to be.